Oh, check it out. There's me. All my fabulousness. <laughs> I am so awesome. Hello? Yes. See guys like this. Oh, wait, no. Not guys like those. Those guys were ugly as fuck, but I would stop at nothing to reduce every single one of you. I've been doing a lot of thinking about how sad and unfair my life has been. All because girls haven't been attracted to me. The man you're looking at is 22-year-old YouTuber Elliot Roger. This video is one of many he recorded lamenting his obsession with his love life or lack thereof. Although his growing anger went ignored, there were countless other red flags throughout Elliot's life that he was plotting something horrific. But no one could have ever predicted just how disturbing his true thoughts were. Well, this is my last video. Or how far he would go to seek his retribution. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. But if you think you knew just how disturbing his thoughts were, think again. Through since removed homemade videos, many that have never been seen before, you'll soon learn the rabbit hole goes deeper than you think. Guys like this. In the infamous case of Elliot Roger. 911, what's the address of your emergency? You're guys somebody else is on the line. Okay. I don't know what happened. Okay, were you injured? Were you injured? Okay, where are you? Somebody else's. We're at Ivy Valley and I'll just uh Okay, you're at Ivy Valley and somebody shot? Yeah. Okay. The frantic 911 call you've just heard was made after someone witnessed a terrifying encounter at a local restaurant in Santa Barbara, California. Minutes before, the well-known eatery was filled with hungry college students set on having a late-night snack. But unbeknownst to the customers, a vicious and diabolical killer was heading their way, who would soon haunt the vulnerable college town. Hey, Elliot Roger here. Just took a nice walk in the park. Check out that sunset. Today I'm at the golf course, though I don't actually play golf. I only come here to admire the whole beauty and serenity of the place. And it's one of the few places where I can come and truly have a, a sense of escape. It's, it's my place of refuge. The sunlight's about to fade, so I'll end this video soon. Yeah. Childhood. It all has to come to this. I'm 22 years old, and I'm still a virgin. I've never even kissed a girl. <laughs> you forced me to suffer all my life, and now I'll make you all suffer. I've waited a long time for this. I'll give you exactly what you deserve, all of you, all you girls who rejected me and looked down upon me, and, and all of you men for living a better life than me, all of you silly active men, I hate you. I hate all of you. I can't wait to give you exactly what you deserve. <laughs> to truly understand how he came to commit such an atrocity, we have to start at the beginning. Before moving to America, the Rogers lived a simple life in London, and they embarked on thrilling trips around the world. Elliot recalled his childhood as memories of happiness and bliss, recollections that would soon be overshadowed by anger and indignation. He enjoyed activities typical that of a young boy, skateboarding, video games, playing outside, and reading. So how did this seemingly normal kid transform into a vicious mass murderer? Elliot Roger here. And here I am at Serrania Park, the most significant place of my childhood. I wish I could be a kid again. Those were the happy years. And I could just live my life without realizing how cruel the world really is. 
According to Lee Chen Roger, Elliot's mother, Elliot was a withdrawn and shy child growing up who enjoyed hanging out with his friends and family. My mom just ordered me the book I've been waiting for for so long. This is so awesome. I'm going to read it now. He would often write down what he wished to say rather than speaking aloud, possibly indicating that Elliot had developed social anxiety from an early age. After moving to America at the age of five, Elliot's parents enrolled him in a private school where he made his first friend in the States, a young girl in the same class. Looking back, it was very ironic that his first friend after the move was a girl, considering that she would quickly become everything that Elliot despised. My parents used to always take me here when I was a kid. Back when my life was happy and fair. Back when I thought the world was fair. How naive I was. I was only an innocent child. Although Elliot would come to hate many people, his love for his family would remain. However, a few months after Elliot's seventh birthday, he was saddened to hear that his parents would be getting a divorce. Following the split, Peter Roger, Elliot's father, introduced Elliot to a woman named Sumaya, his soon-to-be stepmother. Although Elliot thought it was very sudden that his father had found a new girlfriend, Elliot admired him for acquiring a fresh relationship as quickly as he did. This is when Elliot's mindset switched. He came to believe that being attractive meant you would achieve more in life, something he would continue to believe for the rest of his life. At the age of nine, Elliot developed strong feelings of jealousy and envy. He would become angry if one of his friends played with someone else and did not like the idea of sharing. Although this can be typical of young children, these intense emotions would eventually dictate Elliot's state of being for the remainder of his life. This is my usual sunset spot, mainly because there's rarely any young couples here that I would get jealous of. He craved attention and thought that if he dressed in fashionable clothes and bleached his hair, that his status in the so-called hierarchy would ascend. But as time went on, Elliot found himself to be an outcast. I've been cast out. No one likes me. No one accepts me. All my life I've been struggling to fit in with the popular kids. I've been struggling to get a girlfriend. No one, no one has ever accepted me. In an attempt to help the young child, Elliot's parents began taking him to psychiatrists. These visits became routine throughout Elliot's life, but unfortunately, no one was able to prevent the horrific events to come. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm sitting in my car, making another entry in my collection of vlogs. Ever since I hit puberty, I've wanted girls. I've desired girls. I've been really attracted to girls. But they've never shown any attraction back to me. Elliot stated that his joyful existence came to a halt during his ascendance into puberty, in which he claimed to have begun his prolonged vendetta against the female species. Identifying as the invisible kid in school, Elliot began acting out to gain attention, to which he undoubtedly succeeded. He was teased by his fellow classmates and remembered one girl in particular that would regularly berate Elliot with her friends. Elliot began to hate all girls because of this. Regardless, his entire existence from here on out revolved around one goal, acquiring a girlfriend. Although he possessed a strong hatred for the young classmate, he believed that having a girlfriend would make him happy. But as he grew older, the promise of accomplishing such a task seemed to become almost impossible. Elliot went on to use this fact as a twisted justification to commit an unthinkable crime. We cannot draw any conclusions regarding the likelihood that Elliot had a personality disorder, but his intense desire for attention is a key feature of narcissistic personality disorder. You denied me a happy life. You deprived me of And I will take great pleasure in denying you life. It's only fair. <laughs> Elliot became depressed into his teen years due to the fact that he transferred through multiple schools and was continually bullied at each one. Not long after, his parents resorted to homeschool, 
his social anxiety worsened, and he was prescribed Xanax and Prozac, but stopped taking them after a year. It came to a point that, at the age of 16, he broke down at a family friend's dinner and confessed that he wished to commit. This was due to the fact that one of the girls at the dinner had invited her cool friends, as Elliot referred to them. He was unable to cope with the thought that he was not a part of the cool kid group. Additionally, he grew upset about the lack of attention from girls that he desired and felt disgusted when he would see others in relationships. I've concluded that females have a, a very flawed and perverted form of sexual attraction. After high school, Elliot attended Pierce Community College, where his behavior became increasingly aggressive. Remaining an outcast, he was supposedly attacked by fellow students, including an incident where four young men threw eggs at him while Elliot was walking back to his mother's house. Elliot retaliated by throwing an egg at their car, causing the men to initiate a fight. He was armed with a knife and brandished it to scare the boys off. After this incident, he felt powerful and would soon invoke similar acts. Elliot maintained a few friends throughout his college experience, but his extreme views on women and the world had put a strain on their relationship. Elliot felt even more slighted by this. He eventually dropped out of Pierce and enrolled at Moore Park, but then transferred to Santa Barbara City College where he studied history and geography, although his focus remained on his anger towards other people. This world, it's so twisted. It's so cruel. And you girls make it cruel. While attending Santa Barbara City College, Elliot moved into an apartment in Isla Vista and soon began exploring his new surroundings. He would frequent the local Starbucks where, inevitably, he often witnessed couples waiting in line. On one occasion, he supposedly became so infuriated at a specific couple that he followed them out of the establishment before splashing them with hot coffee. He apparently did the same to two girls on a separate occasion that didn't show him the attention he thought he deserved. Elliot felt triumphant after his unprovoked attacks and quickly realized that he was capable of doing much more. I am so angry right now. I was enjoying a peaceful time at this beach park. And what comes to sit in front of me? A young couple, a guy with his hot girlfriend. I mean, who do they think they are? Coming here, sitting in front of me to make me feel jealous? This is the reason why I hate the world. This is getting too out of hand. I can't go anywhere anymore without seeing these young couples getting jealous and you know, having them remind me of what I'm lacking in life. Narcissistic people are extremely hypersensitive to criticism and rejection and can become angry, spiteful, and violent towards anyone whom they perceive as mistreating them or not giving them the special treatment they feel they deserve. This is not only due to the narcissist's fragile self-esteem, but also because they feel they are special and unique and should therefore be accepted, welcomed, and admired by all those they interact with. Undeniably, this seemed to be the case for young Elliot. He was still very intent on having a girlfriend and thought that becoming rich would make him more attractive to girls. Using the monthly allowance from his parents, he spent this on high-end clothes, including brands such as Armani and Hugo Boss. Right now I'm wearing my Hugo Boss shirt. It's one of my favorite button-down shirts. This is a shirt I wore to the premiere of The Hunger Games. It looks fabulous. And yeah, I did walk on the red carpet on that premiere. It's quite, quite an experience indeed. He strived to look of extreme wealth and felt that he was superior to all other men when doing so. He even spent $700 on lottery tickets and took multiple trips to Arizona to purchase them, but failed to win. He felt hopeless about his life, and it was around this time when Elliot considered the idea of carrying out a deadly act of revenge. He deemed it the day of retribution. It's truly a beautiful day, but as I've always said, a beautiful environment is the darkest hell if you have to experience it all alone. And sadly, 
I have been alone for a very long time. I do everything I can to appear attractive to you. I dress nice. I'm sophisticated and magnificent. I have a nice car, a BMW. Well, it's nicer than 90% of the people in my college. Um, you know, I'm polite. I'm the ultimate gentleman. And yet, you girls, you never give me a chance. I don't know why. You know, I, I, I put a lot of effort into dressing nice. These, these sunglasses here were $300. Giorgio Armani. So I'll put them on. See? I'm the guy you should be going for, not those obnoxious slobs you love so much. I don't know why you're not attracted to me. I don't know what you don't see in me. But I'll make sure you all pay for it. Elliot's speech and mannerisms are similar to that of individuals with developmental delays, specifically autism spectrum disorder. The dialect can be recognized as monotone and flat, but in some cases it can be exaggerated with the use of very formal vocabulary, as is the case with Elliot. You've deprived me of love and affection all my life. And that's a declaration of war. If it's war you want, then war you shall have. Adults with autism spectrum disorder sometimes speak and behave in a manner that mimics a favorite TV or movie character. Elliot seemed to have been doing this as he appeared to be impersonating the words and facial expressions of an evil villain. It would later be confirmed that Elliot was diagnosed with Asperger's disorder, which is now known as autism spectrum disorder. But in no way does this correlate with his actions. I'm going to show you all a short little tour of this college town called Isla Vista. Every time I drive through this place, I am overcome with rage. Here it is. I'm approaching a street called Del Playa. So many beautiful girls walking around here. But they would never give me a chance. See, look at that one. I just passed one. Here we go. Look at this. Groups of hot young sluts who would just reject me. And these, look at these douchebags right here. These assholes, these obnoxious little slobs. Those are the kind of guys that girls like instead of magnificent gentlemen like myself. Hold on, let me check if I'm getting some good footage. Okay. To fuel his rage, he would also scour the streets of Isla Vista at night, hoping to find couples and beautiful young women to chastise from his car. You're an asshole. This further indicates Elliot's sense of grandiosity, as he likely felt a surge of confidence while stating the insults. It's noteworthy that he makes these comments from the safety of his car, rather than confronting the ongoers face to face, giving him the feeling that he had the upper hand. Here I am, Elliot Roger, beautiful, magnificent gentleman. Though the girls around this town don't see it, This world does not make sense. This revulsion for people in relationships compelled Elliot to share his thoughts in online forums, one of them being bodybuilding.com, where he writes, it's been my life's struggle to get a beautiful white girl. Along with this, authorities located several other posts written by Elliot that continue to expound his fury for women, such as women don't deserve rights, and they are evil, sadistic beasts who whore themselves out to degenerate men and ignore the men who actually deserve them. There were about 28 pages filled with similar rhetoric, each post more hostile than the last. Look, that's the house I got beat up at when I walked in on a party. That was about almost a year ago now. The beating that Elliot referred to happened during the summer of 2013, 
While at a house party, Elliot was jumped by a group of college kids before being pushed off of a 10-foot balcony. He stated that they were trying to hurt him without reason, but the truth was later revealed that Elliot had attempted to shove multiple girls off of the balcony after making gestures to imitate shooting a gun towards the partygoers. A group of young men intervened and, of course, Elliot lied about what happened to his family and the police. Once again, he was furious that the girls didn't take an interest to him and violently retaliated. The violent party event would be Elliot's last straw. See, guys like this. Oh, wait, no. Not guys like those. Those guys were ugly as fuck, but... See, look. Look here. A house party. Beautiful girls talking with their... They're frat boys. I hate them all. They think they're better than me. They'll never accept me as one of them. Those girls would never go for me. During the later months of 2013, Elliot received two new roommates, students at UCSB, who he greatly disliked. Their arguments seemed to be a daily occurrence, and Elliot even reported one of the young men to the local authorities for stealing his candles. The two friends found Elliot to be strange and obnoxious and planned to report him to their complex manager. The tension would continuously rise, but unfortunately, the pair would eventually meet a cold and cruel fate. The girls are not attracted to me. There's a major problem with that. A major problem. That's a problem that I intend to rectify. <laughs> In preparation for the unforgettable day, it was discovered that Elliot read books on mass murderers and serial killers at the library, but would never actually take the literature home. I will not let this fly. It's an injustice that needs to be dealt with. He would also research various torture equipment, such as Spanish Inquisition torture devices. But it was later revealed in a recovered document just how far he was willing to go to attain his satisfaction. Following Elliot's chilling preparation, the day had finally come for the twisted mind to take his revenge. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity, against all of you. Well, this is it. This is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. It's evident here that Elliot is bordering on delusion with this bizarre performance. It's possible that his off-putting personality, so to say, is exactly what ostracized him from his peers. But Elliot's vindictive persona would propel him to organize a horrific attack. Before his day of retribution, it was discovered that Elliot had sent a disturbing email to his parents, therapists, and acquaintances entitled My Twisted World. This would later be known as Elliot's Manifesto, where he detailed his anger and frustrations toward the world specifically women. Not only that, but the killer also went into chilling detail about what he really had planned for the vulnerable town of Ila Vista. Minutes ago, I finally checked my email. I saw this letter. It's from Elliot Roger, who's a Santa Barbara City College student. It's 141 pages. So when you get to the end, which is where I went to immediately, page 134, it's a very detailed attack they plan on taking in Isla Vista, including shooting people and driving in a car to intentionally run over pedestrians and then shoot themselves. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. It's an injustice, a crime, because I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men instead of me, the supreme gentleman. I will punish all of you for it. <laughs> 
Elliot's maniacal laugh almost sounds forced, like he's an actor playing a part, and his smile is likely feigned. Fake smiles are one of the most common nonverbal lies in body language, and only includes the mouth compared to genuine smiles which involve most of the face. Elliot also wrote that he planned to kill his younger half-brother Jazz and stepmother Sumaya. He accredited this decision to his hatred for how Sumaya would supposedly mistreat him, and even though he mentioned that he and his half-brother had grown closer over the previous year, he could not bear the thought of having someone else live the life that he wanted. What are you doing, Jazz? Elliot wrote that Sumaya would allegedly chastise him, saying that Jazz would go on to become a successful actor. He'd have lots of friends, whereas Elliot would not. I'll be a god, exacting my retribution and all those who deserve it. And you do deserve it, just for the crime of living a better life than me. All you popular kids, you've never accepted me. All I've ever wanted was to love you and to be loved by you. I've wanted a girlfriend. I've wanted sex. I've wanted love, affection, adoration. But you think I'm unworthy of it. That's a crime that can never be forgiven. These thoughts are indicative of severe antisocial personality disorder. Based on the contents of the email, his desire for revenge and his willingness to harm others in such a callous and vicious manner indicates a complete lack of empathy and poor moral conscience. Although it was never expected that he would take his anger so far. Next, it would be uncovered that the original day of Elliot's retribution was previously set for April 26, 2014. This was due to the fact that he knew of his father's scheduled business trip, which guaranteed his absence. Elliot was sure he would be able to successfully complete the murders of his stepmom and stepbrother without worrying if he would have to kill his father. But two days before his arranged day of carnage, Elliot fell ill with a cold and his dad arrived home from his trip earlier than expected. It seemed in Elliot's murderous mind that it wasn't of the right timing to commit his so-called revenge as he so desperately wanted things to be perfect. He would then reset the date for May 24th, almost a month later. But instead, for an unverified reason, the horrifying incident would occur the night prior, perhaps suggesting that Elliot assumed his retribution would last into the early morning hours. And in turn, I will deny all of you life. <laughs> it's only fair. I hate all of you. Humanity is a disgusting, wretched, depraved species. While unaware that his future plans would be unexpectedly put on hold, Elliot released multiple YouTube videos one week prior to April 26, 2014, showcasing his frustrations with life. However, he wouldn't release his final video until the day of the shooting, which puts into detail just exactly what he intended to do. Although he does not speak of his set plan in the initial videos, it goes to show how his enraged mindset grew with each day. Oh, check it out. There's me. And all my fabulousness. Oh yeah. Elliot Roger. <laughs> I am so awesome. When Elliot made these videos, he likely didn't imagine where they might end up. In the last place, someone with a fragile ego would want them. Reddit. A participant located some of Elliot's videos, which many of the users described as disturbing and unpleasant to watch. One of them being a student at UCSB, who would then go on to confirm the deadly event to their fellow online peers. Many of the comments regarded Elliot's awkward mannerisms, some even predicting that he would go on to commit a terrible act, but others would shockingly side with Elliot, expressing their synonymous feelings of loneliness. Some of the accounts wished that they had warned police when they initially viewed the troubling content, but it was later revealed that the authorities had a chance to prevent the attack well before the memorable day. This world, it's so twisted, it's so cruel. And you girls make it cruel. You 
you girls have starved me of and enjoyment and pleasure for my entire youth. You've taken eight years away from my life. Eight years I'll never get back. Elliot's mother came across the uncomfortable video soon after they were posted while researching her son's name, fearing that he may have been transported to a nearby hospital. The worried mother hadn't heard from Elliot in three to four days and was feeling very uneasy regarding his whereabouts. After finding the alarming content, she immediately contacted mental health officials who alerted the local authorities. Officers then began to look for Elliot and found him in his apartment before proceeding to ask about the videos. When conducting the check, police surmised Elliot to be an extremely polite young man that did not seem to be acting in a concerning manner. The 22-year-old convinced the authorities that he was completely fine, stating that he would not hurt himself or anyone else. Compared to the bold presence Elliot portrays on camera, in reality, he was very withdrawn and quiet. While the officers may have thought Elliot to be a normal resident of the college town, they never would have guessed that they were talking to a cold-blooded killer who could have been stopped. I mean, yes, yes, I'm a shy, quiet guy, but I have good qualities to myself. I'm a gentleman. You know, I'm sophisticated. I'm polite. I have good values. And I can be fun, too, if they just give me a chance to open up. But girls never give me a chance because they're evil and cruel like that. Although Elliot talked about his plan for the Day of Retribution in his most infamous video, he left out the horrific agenda that was supposed to take place one day before the actual attack. This included his idea of kidnapping, tormenting, and killing his victims within his apartment. He admitted that in order to do so, he must eliminate his two housemates so he can utilize the space for his diabolical activity. Next, he schemed to lure people in one by one, to which he alluded that monstrous acts would be performed. Unsurprisingly, Elliot stated that he would torture those he deemed attractive first. He detailed how he would pour boiling water on their bare skin, along with flaying, stripping, and cutting their flesh before removing their heads. Finally, Elliot wanted to disperse the severed body parts amongst the city streets while simultaneously executing his bloody rampage. You will finally see that I am, in truth, the superior one, the true alpha male. <laughs> To begin his day of terror, Elliot attacked and killed 19-year-old George Chin, a friend of his roommates. He left his body in the fetal position, surrounded by blood-ridden paper towels in the apartment bathroom. The autopsy report would identify that George had been stabbed approximately 94 times. Elliot then took out his rage on his two roommates, 20-year-olds Waihan Wong and Chen Hong. He attacked and killed them in one of the bedrooms, leaving their bodies face down with bed sheets and clothes over them. They too died from multiple stab wounds. Hours after taking the lives of his first three victims, Elliot took his evil plan to the streets of Ila Vista. It's unknown what exactly he was doing in the time between killing his roommates and when he was spotted next. He was apparently seen at approximately 4.40 in the afternoon on May 23, 2014, while boarding a local bus in Santa Barbara. Bizarrely, two young girls were also walking in front of him, visibly shaken up. They sat very close together, once in their seat, while Elliot sat directly behind them. He supposedly whispered, don't look back, while his hand rested in his backpack, suggesting a gun was in his possession. He was apparently sharply glaring at the pair and looked very angry. The girls seemed like they were being held hostage by Elliot, and possibly intimidated into getting on the bus with him. Unfortunately, it's unclear as to what may have happened to the individuals before and after this. Around 9.15 p.m., Elliot made his way to the Alpha Phi house in Ila Vista, California, where he planned to kill every girl that resided in the well-known sorority. He knocked on the large wooden door for three minutes straight, but the tenants refused to answer. Luckily for the girls, a code was required to enter, something apparently Elliot didn't know. Although it was later discovered that he'd been stalking the sorority for quite some time. 
His inflated sense of self-esteem may have led him to think that someone would open the door for him without question. In his mind, he was an extremely attractive and well-dressed young man. Why wouldn't the girls open the door? Fortunately, the sorority sisters were able to dodge the determined Elliot, but others weren't so lucky. On the day of retribution, I am going to enter the hottest sorority house of UCSB. About 30 seconds after the pounding at their front door stopped, the young women immediately heard gunshots ringing out from the nearby surroundings. When they peered out of their windows, they were horrified to see three young women laying along the sidewalk and grass. When police responded to the scene, they found 19-year-old Veronica Wise and 22-year-old Katie Cooper deceased, resulting from multiple gunshot wounds. 911, what is that, a severe emergency? Uh, we have a shooting on Embarcadero del Norte. Embarcadero, okay, we're on Embarcadero del Norte. Uh, uh, Golita, Ala Vista. No, I know, we're on, like, what, what block or what's the nearest cross street from there? Uh, it is Segovia. Okay. Did you actually see the person shooting the gun, or did you see what it made contact with, or did you I just hear it? I saw the car. You saw a car? Did it make contact with anybody? Yeah. Who? We have three girls, three women. That got, they got shot? Yes. Both girls were part of the Tri-Delta sorority at UCSB and were simply walking to their intended destinations before being viciously shot and killed by Elliot. The third gunshot victim could be heard yelling, I'm going to die repeatedly, while speaking to her mother on the phone. But it was later reported that she survived the horrific ordeal. Next, at approximately 9.27 p.m., officers responded to numerous gunshots being heard from the area of Embarcadero del Norte and Pardal Road. After arriving, police spotted a couple of local college kids standing on the corner and asked about the tumultuous sounds. The students claimed that it was merely fireworks, but the officers would soon come to understand that it was far from anything celebratory. Humanity is a disgusting, wretched, depraved species. If I had it in my power, I would stop at nothing to reduce every single one of you to mountains of skulls and rivers of blood. After speaking with the college kids, police noticed a black BMW parked near the Ila Vista Deli, a local diner. Seconds later, they identified a young male frantically running to the vehicle before fleeing eastbound on Pardal. Little did the officers know the man would turn out to be Elliot Roger, the prime murder suspect in this harrowing case. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Oh, I'm at, I need that place. You're, you're about to think somebody else is on the line. Okay. I don't know what happened. Okay, were you injured? Were you injured? Okay, where are you? Somebody else is. We're at Ivy Deli and I was just, uh... Okay, you're at Ivy Deli and somebody shot? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I understand. Okay, I'm getting help started. Do you know how many people are hurt? Soon the police heard screaming from inside of the deli and began making their way to the traumatized bystanders. Inside, they found a young man profusely bleeding while lying on the ground with a single gunshot wound to his chest. He would eventually be identified as 20-year-old Christopher Martinez, a student at UCSB. Initially, it was reported that Christopher could be seen breathing when police first arrived, but soon one of the officers provided CPR as his breaths were no longer visible. Unfortunately, the first aid was to no avail. But Elliot's murderous rampage was far from over. Elliot continued driving around the town of Isla Vista while simultaneously shooting the civilians and hitting them with his car, where he injured multiple people. During this time, numerous police officers responded, 
Some were forced to engage in shootouts with the killer. I was shot at from a shoot over BMW. Westbound from Alamogadale. I'm going to be in the next few times, brother. in progress. The first shootout took place on Del Playa Road, where Elliot fired his weapon at one of the authorities from his BMW. Taking shelter between two parked cars, the officer was forced to shoot back in defense, but was unable to stop him. Next, Elliot traveled along Sabato Tarde Road while shooting his handgun out of his window at passing citizens. Fearing for their lives and those around, Multiple officers amongst the area opened fire on the car, with only one round confirmed to have entered the vehicle. The bullet wounded Elliot on his upper left thigh, but unfortunately could not bring the ambush to a stop. All those popular kids who live such lives of hedonistic pleasure while I've had to rot in loneliness for all these years, they've all looked down upon me every time I tried to go out and join them. They've all treated me like a mouse. Well, now... I will be a god compared to you. You will all be animals. You are animals. The horrific incident would eventually come to an end at approximately 9.35 p.m. when Elliot subsequently crashed his vehicle into the back of a parked black Jeep on Del Playa Road. Officers rushed the scene, where they found an additional victim that had been thrown off of his bike after being hit with Elliot's car. The authorities placed him in handcuffs, unsure if the person had been involved with the shooting. Quickly, they established that the individual was an innocent victim and immediately provided medical treatment for his wounds. <laughs> I am so godlike. The shooting lasted a harrowing eight minutes, but in that time, the community of Isla Vista would be drastically altered in the most sickening way. Police immediately began to investigate how someone could commit such an atrocity and eventually found a shocking piece of information. Um, my name's Sean Covey, I'm property manager in IV like, department. Um, and I know something's going on in IV. I just got email from one of the residents and it's like really disturbing and it's like- Okay, there's been a- there's there's been a shooting in IV. No, no, I understand that, but I got an email from a resident, and it's like 141 pages long, and it says, like, the life of Elliot Roger. Okay. And at the end, it talks about killing people. Okay, yeah, so, we, uh, we actually have somebody else. What's your name? Following the shooting, police once again made their way to Elliot's apartment, where they uncovered the bodies of his roommates, Weehan Wong and Chen Hong, and their friend, George Chen. The horror continued to unfold as law enforcement searched Elliot's room, where they found disturbing pieces of evidence, indicating that he had been planning the attack for an extensive amount of time. This included a small sledgehammer, one 18-inch blade machete, a zombie killer fixed blade knife, a folding knife, lottery tickets, a book entitled The Art of Seduction, various handgun cases, a printout of his 137-page email, personal journals, a hand-drawn picture of a person being stabbed by multiple knives, along with several additional items. The journal looked like it had been torn apart, but the latest entry on May 23, 2014 read, I had to tear some pages out because I feared my intentions would be discovered. I taped them back together as fast as I could. This is it. In one hour, I will have my revenge on this cruel world. I hate you all. Die. Additionally, one of Elliot's button-up shirts and a pair of denim jeans were entangled in his bed sheets. A majority of the clothing was suffused in blood, most likely the outfit that Elliot wore while killing his roommates and their friend. Officers then noticed lengthy slashes and cuts that had been made to the bed, which suggests that Elliot may have been practicing how to use the deadly weapon before turning it on his first three victims. But most eerily of all, authorities discovered Elliot's computer resting atop his sheets open with the words, your video has been uploaded, written across the screen. The ominous video would come to be Elliot's final and most notorious YouTube blog, detailing the chilling and unimaginable plan to enact his revenge on the people of Isla Vista entitled Elliot Rogers Retribution. Unfortunately, these items were found much too late after Elliot had already carried out the truly evil act. 
To this day, many consider Elliot to be a glorious incel hero, but to most, he is known as a cold-blooded killer. Some claim that Elliot has provided them with inspiration, including the mass murderer Alec Manassian, who killed 11 people in 2018. Unfortunately, Elliot is still highly regarded as a hero to his cult following. Before authorities were able to ensure that Elliot faced the necessary consequences, he had completed his structured plan. Within Elliot's car, police found a Sig Sauer pistol, several loaded magazines, and a mix of unidentified prescription drugs. They also discovered Elliot's iPhone 4, containing 200 selfies, along with his infamous vlogs. The autopsy would later confirm that Elliot ended his life. But most would argue that the so-called incel hero took the easy way out, while so many had to endure the worst kind of suffering and pain. Within the short period of time, he would go on to injure 14 people and viciously murder six innocent victims. Do you know how much misery you've caused me? I'm such a nice guy. Why won't you give me a chance? <laughs> 